If you wish to make an apple pie from scratch, you must first invent the universe. The tighter physics have tried to grasp onto physical reality. To understand what it's really made of, what are the core building blocks of life at the basis of it all? Life, the universe, slips through your fingers, and you come up with something that's increasingly abstract, increasingly abstract, to come to the realm of pure abstraction, and that's what the unified field is. It's pure abstract potential, pure abstract being, pure abstract self-aware consciousness. We live in what he calls a participatory universe. Rather than thinking of the universe as something that's already created and that we're plopped down in the middle of it having these experiences, what Dr. Wheeler is suggesting is that the universe is a result of what we are doing in our lives. He says we're tiny patches of the universe looking at itself and creating itself along the way. Now this is a, a radical concept because it suggests that when we look into the world of the quantum atom for that most minute, ultimate particle, we may never find it. Because every time we look, the act of looking is consciousness placing, creating, building something there for us to see. And when we look into the expanses, the vast expanses of our universe, searching for the very edge of what we call creation, we may never find it. Because the act of consciousness searching is the creative force that puts something in place. One of the consequences of modern physics is that the, as I think Sir James Jeans said, that uh, the world begins to look more like a giant thought than a giant machine. Um, what he meant is that uh, down deep in the quantum view of the world, that the thing that is most important is information and knowledge. That, that seems to be the driver of everything. And in addition, the more you look at individual particles, the more you realize that there is no such thing as one electron. An electron or any elementary particle exists only in relationship to other things, like other particles or, or the universe at large. This means that, that deeply enough, when you de dive down into the nature of matter, everything we know about the, the everyday world dissolves. There are no objects anymore, there are only relationships. So you're saying as you dig deeper, you find computer code writ in the fabric of the cosmos. How likely is it that we'd find a protein by chance with all the amino acids in that prebiotic soup interacting with each other for, say, billions of years? And I give it a lot of time. How likely is it that we'd ever get a protein to arise by chance? Oh my goodness. So the odds of building even a short functional protein by chance alone is 74 plus 20. You can, remember how you do this in math? You can add the exponents if you're multiplying exponential numbers. Thank you very much, okay? Wow. Now, can anyone get their mind around a number that big? There's only 10 to the 80th elementary particles in the entire universe. There's only 10 to the 16th seconds since the, the Big Bang. There's only 10 to the 139th total events since the, the beginning of the universe. When you measure a particle, the act of measurement forces the particle to relinquish all of the possible places it could have been and select one definite location where you find it. The act of measurement is what forces the particle to make that choice. Going into space, mathematics, quantum mechanics, the secrets of the universe, it's all there. Life is with its beauty, its incredible detail, tuning into it. They want to shut in your mind, talking about Justin Bieber! If electrons and 
protons and neutrons are not matter, but rather a form of gravitationally trapped light. That means matter does not exist. Matter is a word that has been concocted by science to describe a phenomenon that is not truly understood. So, if what appears to be physical around us is not matter, and our bodies are not matter, then who and what are we? And what is this universe that surrounds us? Moore's law dictates that computing power doubles approximately every two years. And eventually we're going to reach the stage where computers can artificially create a virtual reality which is indistinguishable from our own, which begs the question, how do we know it hasn't already been done? When two objects are entangled with one another, they share a peculiar connection. For example, if I were to take these two molecules and entangle them with one another, I could then take them to opposite ends of the universe, and yet, they'd still be connected. Anything I did to this molecule would instantaneously affect this one. Where was I before I was born? Where will I be after I die? Who am I? If in asking those questions, something gets ignited inside of you, some flame of inquiry, some igniting of consideration that there's something going on here that is really mysterious. It, if you are excited, by such things as what I've just mentioned, these kinds of questions, then you're becoming spiritually awakened. And now the question is, how much awakening are you willing to sustain in your life? Mm -hmm. Are you willing to walk in a completely awakened state all of the time? Do you think that's possible? The deeper you go in the structure of natural law, the less material, the less inert, the less dead the universe is, the more alive, the more conscious the universe becomes. Then when you get to the foundation of the universe, the unified field or super strength field, it's simply a field of pure being, pure intelligence. Intelligence because it's the fountainhead of all the laws of nature all the fundamental forces, all the fundamental particles, all the laws governing life at every level of the universe have their unified source in the unified field. That makes the unified field the most concentrated field of intelligence in nature. Non-material, dynamic, self-aware intelligence. Those are the properties of the unified field. In the last five or so years, I've been able to show that hidden inside of these equations, there are computer codes. They're the kind of computer codes that make browsers work. And so if the equations that describe our reality have computer codes hidden in them, that's just kind of weird.